Welcome to Applied Bionomics Phalasis production. This is a beam-based system where we introduce spider mites, get the spider mites established, and then introduce the predatory mite Phalasis. Uh, like a lot of its cousins, Cucumeris, Californica, Schwersky, Lamonicus, uh, they, they're, they're very weak with webbing, so this is a system that requires a lot more care than the Persimola system, uh, because if we let webbing get established on these plants too far advanced, uh, we won't get a, a very effective uh, phalasis production. And sometimes in the summer when things explode, the weather gets bad, we have to rescue this crop with persimilis. So one of the nice things about phalasis is that it's totally compatible with, with persimilis and pretty well all of the other predatory mites. It doesn't interfere, it do goes about its business. It's an amazing mite. We've been producing it for about 18 years now. It was given to us by Ag Canada. It was developed by uh, Howard Thistlewood and Jay Whistlecraft in Guelph, Ontario. Uh, this mite was originally introduced as a specialized mite because of its organophosphate resistance. And so the prime target was the BC strawberry growers because at that time they were having all of their miticides banned but they were still spraying weekly because of the uh, aphid transmitted virus for their uh, strawberry bushes. And so we started using this product. We found it was very effective, not only resistant to organophosphates, but also pyrethroids. So we were testing it on a monthly basis with uh, products like Avid, for example. So it's one of the ones that's uh, it's a gateway type uh, insect because we can introduce this into uh, crops or into people's rearing uh, systems where they're using a lot of chemicals. Um, we don't encourage that and that's certainly not applied approach to biocontrol, but it is something that gets you into uh, some new areas. One of the most uh, frustrating things about this product is that it's too good. When it was originally introduced against the strawberry growers and, and against the strawberry uh, uh, spider mite issues, we found that it overwintered and established in the Fraser Valley of British Columbia, and so in subsequent years the strawberry growers just didn't need to buy any. Uh, so we ran out of our market. Then we started to experiment. We found that it was effective on mint. Uh, the mint growers in Montana especially uh, were basically read the riot act by the uh, people that were buying the mint oil saying that pesticide spikes were unacceptable. And we couldn't provide enough because there's a very, very large acreage in Montana. So they actually built their own insectary and for about three years produced enough to actually inoculate all of the Montana mint fields. But they too found the same problem and they shut the insectary down because once it was established and put into the fields it didn't die away and it overwintered and it came right back. So this product was so commercially effective it was a commercial disaster. Uh, then we found it was the best mite for the bamboo mite but we found exactly the same experience. Once it was put into a bamboo production system it stayed and overwintered. So over the years we've moved this product into ornamental control because one of the really big advantages is that we can put it at very very low levels at two mites per square meter and effectively prevent spider mite establishing. We now have hundreds of acres of hops in Oregon and Washington State, hundreds of acres of arborvitae where we've done the one introduction and have not had to repeat it. And we've got some introductions that are about 18 years old, so it goes back a long time. It's a very, very effective product. Uh, in ornamentals, we can put it on any plant that's sensitive to spider mite and they establish at the propagation stage to a point where it, it greatly reduces the amount of other chemical inter, uh, introductions for miticides or other biological controls. A lot of the other companies don't want to sell this product because it affects their sales. But this product is really quite an impressive product and we really think it's the, going to be the gateway into large-scale agriculture in the future. So uh, use it, use it wisely. You can go at 10 per square, at 2 per square foot for a high density rate or 2 per square meter for the low rate, which is what we use, which is 10,000 per acre on an outdoor application.